Hello, I'm Tim Underwood. Me and a team of colleagues are going to run the New York Marathon and we're going to try to raise £100,000 for Cancer Research UK. I am the least athletic person in history. I don't even run for a bus. I'm, I'm old and I'm not, I'm not enjoying being old. But it's, uh, it's tough going. And I'm just back from a three month research expedition to Nepal uh, and I'm a little behind the curve in terms of training, so I'm hoping to cram in 20 weeks of training in 16. In the last video, we looked at the diagnosis of esophageal cancer. This time, we'll look at some groundbreaking research and show our patients as they begin their treatment journey. I was admitted to hospital on, the, um, on a Sunday. I was out of it. We know that the only way to improve treatment and survival rates is through research. Donations to Cancer Research UK are currently funding work in Cambridge, where they're developing an ingenious way to diagnose esophageal cancer quicker. So currently patients will present to their GP when they've got symptoms, typically difficulty swallowing, and the gold standard test is an endoscopy done in the hospital setting, which is a bit invasive for the patient and not really suitable if you're going to screen a large number of people. For that, in contrast, we need something much more suitable to the primary GP care setting, um, something that can be done quickly, it's less invasive, and that's where we think the cytosponge comes in. And this is it, the cytosponge, a sponge on a string designed to detect the early signs of esophageal cancer. So how does it work? Well, I'm about to find out. Um, the sponge is contained in this small capsule that I'm about to swallow. So from the patient's point of view, that wiggles down to the top of the stomach over a few seconds, the capsule, when it's in the warm environment, then um, releases the sponge. We just pull it out, it collects the cells as it comes, and then we put that into a preservative pot that we can send to the lab for analysis. The whole thing's done in about five minutes. So, here goes. Tom? Yes. Easy. Really, genuinely easy. So you're going to gently pull the string now, are you? I am. Perfect. So here it comes back up, and you'll see the difference between the capsule that I swallowed and the sponge that's going to come back up. Okay, he opened him up for me. So that bit's quite odd, but you can tell Irene's an expert because she did it really quickly, and I was worried I was going to gag then, but I didn't at all. And there it is. That's covered in the cells that line my esophagus. So that those can then be taken from the sponge, spun down, and the analysis of the DNA in those cells can tell me whether or not I've got the early changes of esophageal cancer. The vast majority of cancers at the moment are diagnosed at a late stage, and so the hope is that with this kind of technology and approach, we could detect about half the cases that currently present at a late stage at a much earlier stage. That would be a tremendous advance in this field. While we train for New York, Trevor, one of our patients, faces a marathon of his own. He's just begun nine weeks of chemotherapy in an attempt to shrink his tumour. But the side effects of chemotherapy are not the only thing that he has to worry about. I saw you three weeks ago. Mm. You've had a yeah. st one lot of chemo since then. Yeah. How, how, yeah. How's it been? Uh, it's not been brilliant. I meant it was difficult for me to swallow any solids. Yeah, so I've okay. really been living on soup, complan, cereals right um which is less than i should be eating so i'm sure i've lost some more weight but uh, yeah i mean you've, you've lost about four just under four kilos four since kilos. <coughs> yeah uh, my fitness levels will be lower now um than when i started out at, at some stage i've got to try and start building that up again but to be honest whilst i'm not eating properly my main concern is um is getting on, onto a diet and uh, building some weight up again. When we get to New York, the single factor which will determine uh, how fast we run the marathon, or indeed if we even finish the marathon, will be our physical fitness. And that really resonates with me as a researcher exploring the relationship between fitness and survival following surgery and the complex interaction that has with chemotherapy. Uh, and for us, there are great parallels with the marathon because we know that doing well in the marathon is dependent on your physical fitness, your reserve to deal with that challenge and the same is true of patients undergoing surgery and, and chemotherapy. So 
Esophageal cancer is mainly a disease of middle-aged men, but um, every fifth patient we see uh, tends to be a lady, and Wendy Mould is one such patient. Twelve and a half years ago I had breast cancer, and I wish then that I'd actually written a diary. So this time I have started writing a diary after each appointment I've had at the hospital. The surgeon I spoke to, Tim Underwood, was very kind. He explained everything in detail and his final words were, I will do everything in my power to keep you alive. If I don't survive, I will know that he's done his best and thank you to all the team that tried for me. But looking on the positive side, I'm going to survive this. And yeah, I just feel as though I'm not ready to leave this earth yet. <laughs> gonna have your empty sickness for me it is the four white one I think until sort of this week I've really pushed it out of my mind because um, because I haven't been feeding ill at all I kept thinking this isn't true it's it's someone else but now it's come to reality I must admit this morning it was a little bit scary it's the red First, it's called epirubicin, where you've been told about it. I will lose my hair with the type of chemo that I've got this time. But it's not the end of the world. I've got a lovely family, lovely friends, and I'm sure they will boost me up and hopefully I'll be fine. Four months yesterday till the run, so um, really got to start stepping it up now. But it's been progressing reasonably well, probably better than I thought I'd do. I could do probably around 30 feet when I started without having to stop and puff and pant. And now I can do just under five miles. Benefits for me have been that I've lost just under two stone. And actually just knowing that I can now do something that I've always told myself I couldn't do. I would have always said, can't run, so what's the point of trying? Um, and now I know I can. This is more devastating for a woman, I think, than a man. I think people accept it far more than we think they do. I was really upset when it started to come out. I said beforehand that I wouldn't be upset, but I think when it genuinely happened, I thought, I can't stand this, this is awful. I think that's fine, don't I you? I can wear it out tonight Yeah. and feel human. Yeah. To actually have your own hair my glasses back on, I feel better. She's done a good job. <laughs> Give me a hug. Thank you. Um, well, I had the, um, my third chemo two weeks ago today, which wasn't too bad the first week, but this last <coughs> few days I seem to have lost my voice. Well, not being able to eat. Um, not being able to keep food down and uh, being generally grotty this, this last two or three days. Um, we don't go out together. Very rarely go out. If we do, it's only for a cup of coffee. Because Trevor can't seem to walk very far. Seems to have sapped all your strength, doesn't it? It does. I, mean, I do go out. I go out, you know, visit friends and my sister and so on. But uh, it's not the same when you're on your own. But there you go. I can't remember last time being ill like I have this time and feeling really rubbish and feeling really exhausted all the time. 
basically my body just wasn't coping with the chemo and and eventually I just literally folded I just collapsed to the floor and Mike rang up the emergency number and they said come in and um, that's when they kept me in wasn't it yeah. um, I gradually got more ill and so I was admitted to hospital on the um, on a Sunday um, and that was where I stayed well for the next three weeks but we were out I was out of it um, and I'm still a little unsteady but I was just remembering your limitations. No, we need to uh, find a, a better way of managing these patients so we don't have to put them through so much. Um, at the moment we put them through a huge amount and uh, we ask an awful lot of them and if we can make that journey for them better, uh, easier and safer, then uh, anything's got to be better than what we do at the moment. And if by doing the marathon we can achieve that in some way, then it'll be worth it. Next time on the Cancer Marathon, we follow patients Trevor and Wendy as they go through major surgery, discover how their tumours are used to develop future treatments, and join the team in the final run-up to the New York Marathon. Follow us on our blog at thecancermarathon.org or donate towards our marathon attempt at justgiving.com forward slash thecancermarathon. The money we raise will go towards Cancer Research UK's Catalyst Club, which funds our most cutting-edge and innovative research.